We're going to take a slightly different approach to today's uh, session. We've handed out these worksheets, um, so we're going to ask for a little bit of participation from you. Um, it's totally opt-in, of course. So if you're not feeling the energy, don't worry about it. But if you are, we really appreciate your perspective on this topic. So what we're going to talk about today is data ethics and leadership, uh, building a national conversation for web privacy and web analytics. Uh, so I'm Scott Young, a user experience and assessment librarian at Montana State University. I'm Sarah Mannheimer. I'm the data librarian at Montana State. And Jason Clark is out there. There he is, standing, waving. <clears throat> Thanks, Jason. OK, so um, we're going to talk about the project that uh, Jason, Sarah, and I have been working on. Um, we'll talk about what we produced, and then we'll talk about where we're headed. So the project background. Our project is called a National Forum on Web Privacy and Web Analytics. It's funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services and supported by our institution, Montana State University. The goals of our project is to critically address web analytics practices and then to develop a roadmap towards a more privacy-aware, values-driven analytics practice. So to achieve those goals, we, um, with IMLS funding, assembled um, a forum, a national forum, hosted at uh, our campus in beautiful Bozeman, Montana, last fall. And the, our approach for the forum was a participatory design approach. So we used tools um, and exercises drawn from these three resources, game storming, 75 tools for creative thinking, and the design method toolkit. Uh, and this sort of framed, framed our approach. We uh, did a sequence of design exercises where we um, generated ideas uh, to help frame the problem of analytics and privacy in libraries. And then we developed a number of, of solutions, um, uh, responses, strategies for um, more ethical analytics. And we couldn't have done it without our participants. Here they all are. We had about 40 librarians, privacy researchers, and technologists assembled to help us, help us answer this problem. Um, the IMLS program for this, the forum grant, is, is, is an awesome program. Um, get people in the room, get them to solve a problem. Um, these people are awesome. Some are here uh, this week with us. Uh, Cody Hansen, Danielle, uh, thank you. To you and others. <clears throat> so what did we produce? We're framing our two main outcomes around, around action, because um, this is what we see as necessary for this problem. So we produced um, a set of what we're calling pathways to action, which are discrete project ideas, and then an action handbook, uh, which is um, a manual or a guidebook for implementing more privacy-focused analytics. Then what we're asking for you today is ideas for community engagement from you and your networks. Um, and then leadership for turning some of our ideas into action. So that's where the worksheet will come in. When we've got some questions on the worksheet, if you want to glance at them, maybe some ideas will percolate. We'll come back to it in a few minutes. More information is available at our project site, lib.montana.edu slash privacy forum. We'll be showing this URL again. Um, this is sort of our home base for all of our project work. So our first outcome we're going to talk about is the Action Handbook. And just a little more context about the, the Action Handbook. Um, <clears throat> we originally thought through um, other ways to introduce the idea of privacy and what we were learning, like white papers or standard research papers or articles, um, and what we settled on was a different, we, we will pursue obviously those venues, but we wanted some uh, takeaways that the community could use. And so the Action Handbook is actually a set of practical recommendations for some of the things we were learning, some of the things the community valued. Um, and it really focuses on their, their technical components to the handbook. Uh, such I'm gonna walk through uh, uh, one of them related to implementation of analytics. but. There's also a lot of, uh, as we've heard in other sessions today, the, the work of the social work of these efforts um, is essential. And so we, we included various parts around the um, relationship building, why it's important, how you can do it in, in the context of 
privacy and advocacy for privacy. So, for instance, uh, we have an implementation around a typical, uh, what we had seen, this is based on previous research by um, Scott and our, our, young, our, um, our uh, uh, Dean Kenning Arlish, uh, who looked at implementations of Google and percentages uh, that was presented at the last um, CNI meeting. But what we found is that there's, there are obviously a lot of, whether it's commercial publishers, you saw Cody Hansen speaking to it this morning, um, a lot of people use this kind of uh, analytics tool. And one of the things we wanted to do was introduce how to set it up um, so that it can um, protect privacy. It still collects information, but um, it's more on our terms. So we did things like we introduced the idea of force SSL. There's an anonymized IP flag that you can put into analytics, and then there are other ways that you can actually implement Google Analytics using uh, the, the Google Analytics API and really script it just to um, use information that you value or that you think is necessary. Um, we work through alternative analytics tools like Matomo or uh, Simple Analytics. And these, uh, as, as we begin to audit the, the system or the, the, the <clears throat> the environmental scan of these systems, these, these are occurring more and more every day. There's an interest in analytics that just create views of data that's are, that are necessary. Uh, some of the social things that we brought into this particular part of the handbook are things like what are the privacy concepts that we want our staff to know about. So as you're thinking through your, with your administrator hat, thinking through of how you might make hires or build skills or competencies within your organization. Um, continuing to bring some of these vulnerabilities forward into information literacy environments or teaching environments. Um, and then from a more practical level, uh, also watching and helping your administrators and system administrators audit data or prepare data. We also came up with weighting indicators, uh, in this case around analytics um, and ways that you can audit as you think about a tool or about an implementation of, of analytics. Things like um, level one where you collect only the, the data needed for your use case or look to support tools that have a retention strategy and enable that even the complete removal of data. So all of these components, I won't read them all, but um, are factors to consider when you're thinking through tools that you want to um, bring into your organization. And Sarah's going to pick up with some of the other pathways that are on the handout. Yeah, so from that forum that Scott talked about, we came up also with eight pathways to action. It's basically like a research agenda that we're putting out there into our community. And so you'll want to pay attention as I go through these pathways and see if there's one that resonates more with you because we'll be asking you to think more about one of these pathways um, in the second half of the session. So the first pathway was our assessment toolkit. Um, this is kind of what the keynote speaker, similar to what she talked about, the Hue metrics. It's thinking about metrics that align with our values, like how we can responsibly assess our services uh, using privacy aware um, and user conscious methods. The second one is a research institute, sort of like a think tank that brings together people from different institutions to support evidence-based privacy advocacy and redefining metrics in a way that redefines success. The third one is a leadership training module. The idea is to put together a module that can be implemented in leadership training for future administrators to help them help our leadership think critically about privacy and ethics in libraries. Um, Privacy policy workshops, we, part of the forum was we saw that privacy policies were a really important part. That's sort of the first step to implementing good privacy in your institution. So we're, some, the, one of these pathways was developing pre professional development workshops for library employees where they can write and implement good privacy policies for the library. 
uh, model license. This is model license language that would equip libraries with, um, sorry, a way to promote patron privacy when they're working with vendors and third party systems. Uh, tribal colleges and universities. We had several participants who worked at tribal colleges and universities, which is, um, there are many in Montana. And so there's different um, kinds of issues that are at play when you're at a tribal college or university. And so thinking about how privacy and surveillance affect these communities, what privacy means in that context, and how tribal organizations can implement culturally appropriate web analytics and web privacy practices. Privacy certification. So this is sort of like a lead certification idea that there would be a badge um, that could be you could earn and then post on your library website. And that badge would mean that you had reached certain levels of privacy. Uh, and then I think this is the last one, analytics dashboard. This is a simple, lightweight analytics framework and dashboard that would be tuned to our library privacy needs. So it would only show the necessary data points that we need to tell our story. So we've been pushing this hard. This is our URL. So again, all of this stuff is available in more detail on our website. So all of these ideas were co-created by participants at the forum. Members of our community came together to say, this is what we think we should work on. So we're approaching the end of our grant period, which ends at the end of this month. Um, so we're finalizing these ideas. We're getting feedback from the community at this event and others. Um, to, to strengthen the ideas, and then ultimately disseminate them, disseminate them to the community to say, let's try to work on this. Um, so that's, that's essentially where, where we're headed. We have these eight ideas, community and co-developed, and we want to try to facilitate the realization of, of one or more of these pathways, uh, if possible. Um, and we see this as a community goal uh, that needs community effort to achieve. So here are our eight pathways. The handouts that we distributed, um, the first page is some prompt questions for you to consider, and then um, attached our one-page summaries uh, of each uh, pathway. So take a look at them. Um, what we're gonna do for the rest of the session is we'll spend a few minutes um, just on your own, sort of looking through the pathways, and uh, our first prompt is to ask you to identify one that, that you find motivation for, um, that you would wanna work on, or you see that as the most promising. Uh, and then we're going to try to facilitate some breakout sessions. Um, you know, the room is not super great for that, but, but we're going to try it. So, um, you know, we're looking for groups of two or three um, that will sort around uh, the idea that you um, have sort of shared, uh, identified together, and then um, talk, talk amongst yourselves and then provide feedback on, on the worksheet. Um, the numbers here are the, the page numbers uh, for the worksheet, so if you want to jump to them. Uh, we also have if you have a device and you'd like to do this, um, we have a URL that goes to a form with the same questions, tiny.cc slash cni19s-privacy. So that will take you to a web form that uh, contains the same worksheet prompts. Anything else, Jason and Sarah? Okay, so we'll take a couple minutes just on our own. Um, it's gonna be silent, maybe a little awkward, but that'll be okay. Um, and then I'll come back and uh, we'll just try to sort through into these groups. So <clears throat> talk to you in a couple minutes. We will collect your worksheets after the session and incorporate your ideas into the final pathway proposals. All right, you are welcome to stay and continue the conversations. Officially, we will say thank you for being here and sharing your ideas with us.